something that I really love about being an artist, being an actor in particular, is that you work on so many different kinds of projects. And on every project, no matter if you're having a good time, if it's a bad play, if whatever, or if it's the best thing you've ever done, you learn something different on every project, whether it's about a time period or some part of yourself or about some person in history that you never knew about before or how to eat with your hands. Um, you'll, you'll learn something on every project. And I think that's fascinating. And I think people are fascinating. And I think like my own brain is fascinating. Learning about myself, I think is very interesting. And so why wouldn't I want to be as open to that as I can in the work into learning something and figuring something out? Filmmaker Magazine presents Back to One with Peter Rinaldi. Anastasia Olowin is one of the stars of the film Ben and Suzanne, A Reunion in Four Parts, which just premiered at South by Southwest. She sat down with me in New York City to talk about the work. I want people to just trust me. I want listeners to trust me. I think we need this now. When I look at the climate of the, of the film world, particularly the indie film world, it, it, is, it is frustrating, it is anger-inducing. I've, I've had people already in this calendar year on the show supporting films, independent films that, that I love that, that have died upon arrival in the movie theater, you know what I mean? And, um, and when you see good films, good films that die like that uh, and don't catch on. It's very, very frustrating. So I, I almost want to just, let's just, we need, you, uh, the world needs like a, 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 a champion of these things and, uh, and people should just listen. Let's forget about looking at box office mojo or uh, baloney like this. My listeners need me to tell them things and the need to trust me. I want people to trust me. And I want them to trust me about this film that you're in, by the time people are listening to this, that will be the premiere week for this film. It's rare for me to be talking to somebody before, and this is your first feature film. This is my first feature. I've done a handful of shorts, but this is my first feature. And a lot of theater. And a lot right? of theater. Yes. yes. <laughs> a lot, a lot of theater. But nobody knows you. So that's why I'm saying just trust me, okay? Let's forget about what is going to happen with this film. In my world, this film is a success. So I only watched it for the first time about a month ago, which was really wild. I wanted to wait for it to be fully baked yeah. um, because I'm sure we'll talk about this in, over the course of this conversation, but it's a project that I've been involved with for 10 years. 10 years. And we finally got to shoot the feature and I find the editing process excruciating. Mm -hmm. I did not want to watch any version of this film that was not the final version because right. I didn't want to have any questions about it. I didn't want the sound to be off and take me out of it. Like I just wanted to wait for it to be done yeah. and then watch the actual film and then come to terms with whatever feelings I had about my performance yeah. or yeah. you know, all, yeah. all the things that actors think about in their heads instead of the movie that they're watching. Yeah. Um, so I've only just watched it. And I think you're the first person that I've talked to who I don't personally know who's also watched it. So That's this is funny. gonna be an interesting conversation. That's so yeah. funny. So we're talking about Ben and Suzanne, a reunion in four parts. It is premiering at South by Southwest. So it's funny because Sean Senevaratne, the director of the film, he didn't know I saw the film. That's why I'm bringing it up. Oh. He was going to send me the film. So I'm sure like he's baffled that I saw that this. You've it's, seen that it. hasn't had its world <laughs> premiere yet. <laughs> so before we even get into uh, this film, talk to me about how you came into this endeavor of acting to begin with. So I came to it as a kid. I really liked singing. I was that annoying child on the playground who was singing show tunes or whatever. Um, we got that out of my system pretty quickly. Mm -hmm. But uh, my mom signed me up for a musical theater camp at some point in elementary school. And I just kind of got laser focused on acting and performing. And I, I realized that I loved it. And I did it all through high school. And then I went to college for it. I went to the experimental theater wing at NYU. Mm -hmm. 
mm-hmm. which is all about physically good based things acting. about this that program yeah it's yeah. a great program um it's all physically based acting and creating your own work mm. um and so i kind of went into it at that point being like i just want to make good work with good people i want to do theater and at the time i was like i want to do film and tv too but i didn't understand the business at all mm-hmm. um and i don't think that i i think there's a version of my career where i had been a little more thoughtful in that realm and taken more steps in that space early on but i started uh working pretty consistently in downtown theater I was part of a theater company for 8 years mm-hmm. um and then I produced my own work um I had a production company with a friend of mine and we did new plays mm-hmm. um and then kind of gradually started shifting into the film world and realizing that those were also stories that I was really mm-hmm. interested in telling mm-hmm. I'm really interested in the idea of story and form and mm-hmm. how they kind of feed each other and I think some stories are are a short film and some stories are a feature and mm-hmm. some stories are a play and some are maybe a poem or an email. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um and I think that's really important to consider when you're when you are a storyteller and you're making work is what is the form that suits this story. Mm-hmm. And so the form of filmmaking became very interesting to me mm-hmm. and it is kind of a different muscle from theater making. Right. And I really love that and really enjoy that. That's so cool. What made you decide on that program at NYU? Cuz you you can choose, right? And I know some people that have chosen the other one mm-hmm. had a rough time and then and went to the went and, and then yeah. were like this is my home. Yeah. I I feel like we hear a lot of stories like that cuz you're kind of um I don't know how the program works now, but when I was there, you're kind of stuck with your studio for the first 2 years and then you have the opportunity to transfer if you want to. And so we had transfer track students and we had so many people coming over being like, "Oh, this is so much better." Yeah. Um but I was ETW my whole time there, mm. except I took one semester off to study at the Moscow Art Theater, which felt wow. like such a balance to the work I was doing at ETW. Mm. So I actually did a summer high school program, um which I don't think Tish offers anymore, but um there were you could do like a musical theater program and i think a strasberg program maybe in new york city and then there was another one that was in paris and so i applied to the one in paris because i wanted to go to paris and i didn't realize that it was experimental theater in paris so yeah. i kind of showed up and that's what the oh, program was and so i kind of fell into it and yeah. then realized that i really loved it yeah. um so i when i then applied to nyu i had a pretty clear idea of what i wanted to nice. do there so when you spend 8 years at a theater company. You really are getting yourself, especially when you're doing new work, mm-hmm. right? You're you're really um kind of getting an idea of what kind of material you feel best with, right? And learning about yourself as an actor, I guess, mm-hmm. right? Definitely. I mean, I think uh I kind of got into producing as a way to facilitate myself working like i would see a project that i wanted to do or something that i was interested in and it'd be like well why don't i just do it yeah. what like i'm the only person stand i'm not going to sit around wait waiting to be cast in something yeah. i'm the only person standing between me and this project and i want to play this role so let's figure out how to do that yeah. um and so having that kind of agency in my career has um been you know crucial for me because coming from the theater world you know it's it's uh it takes a while to build a career mm. um and so knowing that i could always fall back on making my own work or facilitating like commissioning a play or putting on my own thing like knowing that i always had that in my back pocket made me feel like okay i am a working actor mm-hmm. um and that is an identity that's really you know important and and valuable to hold on to i think it's it's hard to be a working actor mm-hmm. because there's not a lot of work a lot mm-hmm. of the time so i've i feel like i've been um very fortunate to have discovered that i am good at that producerial side as mm-hmm. well mhm and so were you always during this time doing auditions for things outside of that world mm-hmm. and it, were they were they theater auditions mostly or were there at times uh, films a little bit of both and this is actually a good segue into the 10 year story of yeah. the tourist cycle um so 10 years ago i came across a backstage listing for the short film tourists that Sean had written wow and i didn't know Sean at the time i just submit myself to this yeah. audition But I remember um I remember that listing very well because I was, you know, on backstage every day throwing, you know, shooting my shot. Yeah. 
Um, and so many of the casting calls were either things that I was like, well, I could play this, but it's not interesting to me. Yeah. Or there were typos in the thing or the, you know, like <laughs> That's th a red things flag, that I'm right? like, yeah, like little red flags <laughs> on things um, or just roles that I didn't want to play and being like, ah, oh, there's nothing that I'm interested in. And I remember, I don't remember what the listing itself was. Sean might still have it somewhere. But what I do remember, which was really rare, um, or that I hadn't really come across before, is that in the supporting materials that you can upload, Sean had um, had posted a lookbook. Mm. And it was really beautiful and had these beautiful reference images and was just so thoughtful in how he had put mm. it together. So before I ever met Sean, I felt some kind of a kinship to him. Mm. Um, I really responded to that Mm -hmm. that visual piece and i i really responded to the story itself which that short film is these two characters ben and suzanne on a drive to the airport where she's going off to work in a different country wow. and flashbacks to their relationship up until then and you're kind of left unclear as to whether or not they're saying goodbye for now or forever mm. and i thought it was a really beautiful story and i, I connected with it right away um, and then i met sean in the audition mm -hmm. uh, and then so we Wait, had can we pause there? Uh -huh. You're going into that audition then with some kind of respect or something because of that lookbook. Absolutely. That changes your energy. Mm -hmm. Well, I went into it knowing that I really wanted to be a part of this project and feeling like I should be a part of this project. Right. That this was someone that I wanted to work with. And you knew that you were probably going to be respected because this is an artist yeah. and he had a beautiful, like thoughtful way yeah. of doing this. Yeah. And that changes your energy going in because you, you, you suspect that these places are usually dens of ridiculousness, right? These. Oh, I've had some weird auditions. <laughs> <laughs> We're like, show me, you know, like, you know, right. show me yeah. your stuff here. Are you yeah. the one, you know, that kind of energy. And that cha that matters. Mm -hmm. It matters a lot. And the, so that first audition, I felt like very connected, and I was like, I like, I was like, I got this. Um, and then, and also like very, but like you know, you never really know. Yeah. Um, and then Sean called me for a callback um, with Sathya, um, the other actor who ended up doing this whole ten year mm -hmm. process together. And Sean's apartment. He Sean. So the. The original audition was at a space, and then the callback was at Sean's apartment. And his apartment happened to be very close to mine in Williamsburg at the time. Um, and it was a walk up, and I went and I buzzed, and Sean came down to meet me. And we went back up and realized that he had locked himself out of his apartment. So we did the callback in the stairwell of his apartment. <laughs> and it felt very like, you know, here we are, let's go, just go with it. It felt very like DIY into yeah. filmmaking. And, yeah. you know, we were kids and we were like, yeah, yeah. sure, of course I'll do a callback in a hallway. <laughs> um, and it ended up being great. Yeah. You know, it was it was wonderful. Um, and then he cast us after that. That's and, amazing. Yeah. We need to pause here because I need to let Sean tell his side of that story, which I asked for. What? And this is what Sean says about that. Anastasia and I met back when I was doing casting for my short film, Tourists, which was birthed out of wanting to explore ideas for the feature, which was called Continents then. At the time. The auditions were somewhat unorthodox. I was working my job at the time as a teaching assistant doing a summer film program for middle schoolers. She came in on my break for, for the audition which I had posted on backstage with a somewhat atypical casting po post. Anastasia was the first person that came in. Vibes were on point from the jump. Instead of doing a scene, we improvised a lunch where she was meeting with a friend before her big trip abroad and just had to fill him in on what was going on with her life and how she fe felt about it all, particularly her parting with Ben. I remember that now. See, isn't that isn't this That's interesting? That's very cool, yeah. She was awesome. It just felt like I was talking to the character. Felt very true and effortless. 
I did this with a number of folks throughout the day and that revealed so much of what I loved about Anastasia. She deep reads and understands things on an intuitive level. But beyond that, it was something about her essence. A really unquantifiable thing. But a character to me is essentially that actor's essence reformatted, so to speak. It just felt right. Callbacks with Satya solidified that, which were in the stairwell of my walk up because I had locked myself <laughs> out of the apartment getting the door. She thought, getting the door? Yeah, he came down to get apartment, the door. Getting the door, yeah. right, got it. She thought it was funny and offered me flip flops. Oh yeah, because I was like, because he was barefoot and I lived, you know, two blocks away and I was like, do you want <laughs> shoes for your feet? This should be, an event like this should be a part of every audition because it throws <laughs> things off so wonderfully, right? Well, I think it also proved to Sean that like we could hang, like we could roll with the yes. punches of like very low budget short filmmaking right? where like you're, you know, on a shoestring and sometimes right. things get weird and go wrong and you know people some people are game to play and some people aren't right right which isn't a bad thing for the people who aren't game to play it's just right. you know a different way of working right anastasia was suzanne and satya was ben and these are the folks i wanted to go with on this now 10-year journey so 10 years so you all made that film. We made the short. We made Tourists. Um, we all immediately were like, these are wonderful people. Yeah. Um, we wanted, you know, we knew that it was always going to be the prelude to a feature. Uh -huh. um, and so Sean started writing the feature after that. Kind of like a sequel to this moment, right? Or, it, or, or a redo of it? I think, I think... I think when I say prelude for the short film, that's really what it's meant to be. It's like, this is a little moment before... Yeah. And then the film right. itself is the event, I guess. Right. Um, and Tourists came out beautifully, and we had a really lovely festival run with that. And Sean started writing the feature. Yeah. I think over the 10 years, he's. we should ask him how many drafts and different versions of yeah. the feature there have been. And pretty much every summer since then, we were like, oh, this summer we're making the feature. <laughs> this summer we're making the feature. And it kept getting kicked down the road and yeah. kicked down the road to the point where Satya and I were like, we're going to age out of these roles. <laughs> like, this is this is not going to work out for us and how sad <laughs> for everyone. Um, but I, I will say something that I respect so deeply from Sean, and this is also just like his integrity as a person, but there were so many, um, it would have been very easy for him to write the feature and be like, okay, I'm going to go get some big names to play right. these roles. Right. Very easy for him to do that. And we all would have understood. Mm -hmm. um, but he was so committed to us as these characters for 10 years, which is absolutely nuts, but also like so meaningful and so special. And I think that the film that we finally made is imbued with the 10 years of knowing yeah. this story and knowing each other and becoming right. very dear friends. Like, I was in Sean's wedding. I was a bridesmaid. Amazing. I wear the bridesmaid dress that I wore in Sean's wedding in Ben and Suzanne oh, at yeah. some point. Oh, yeah. um, so there was a deep friendship that was formed there as yeah. well. Yeah. And then in the process of the feature getting kicked down and kicked out for various reasons, Sean wrote another short film based around Ben's character oh. um, that we shot in 2021, I think. Um, partially as just a way to kind of, you know, tangibly dive back into the, yeah. these characters in the space, kind of checking in with them. And so that was a really lovely process too, to get to kind of yeah. revisit that. And then in November of 2022, I texted Sean and I was like, hey, we made this Ben installment. We should make a Suzanne installment. <laughs> what about me? Yeah. Um, and he was like, yes, absolutely. Actually, I'm going to Sri Lanka to visit my dad in February. Do you want to come and we'll shoot something on Super 8? Wow. And I was like, the, the answer to that question is yes. <laughs> There's no way I'm saying no to yeah. going to Sri Lanka and shooting like whatever we shoot on yeah. Super 8. So I went with him 
And that was a wild, like wonderful mm. week. Um, we stayed with his family. We drove, we did a little road trip around. Yeah. And we also met with a couple of production companies in mm. Sri Lanka while we were there. Mm-hmm. And that kind of, I think made things, and Sean, I won't speak for Sean, but for me at least it made like actually making the feature feel mm. tangible for mm-hmm. the first time. Mm-hmm. Um, but I didn't, because it had been such a long process, I was like, I'm not, I don't believe this until I get on the plane. <laughs> <laughs> of course. Of course. And you know, so when I'm when I see this film and I see something that I need uh, to happen happening right away, which is feeling the authenticity of this connection between these people. I'm sure part of that has to do with the idea that even even embarking on any kind of event that places you in the past of this of these characters Mm -hmm. is going to help you when you actually are doing the actual feature because you have a backstory that you lived out right you know in this case it was shot on 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 cameras and it was and it it was its own film i mean you people can do this in their own ways to create a a a living backstory Mm -hmm. that's Mm -hmm. going to help me as an audience member uh, uh i think feel the re- reality of things and then you're actually liking these people that also helps right all this helps to create what is special about this movie there's something really lovely about because we all know each other so well um and especially Sathya and i knowing sean so well um and sean knowing us so well so parts of these characters have evolved to meet us a little bit we've yeah. kind of met each other in the middle in some way right. even though you know it's it's a very particular relationship and situation and all of that there are elements of each of us i think in these characters and there are elements of sean in these characters mm. and i think us just at this point knowing his humor knowing his sensibilities knowing his aesthetic just as a friend and a collaborator for so many years that made a lot of things just kind of intuitive Mm -hmm. um because it's like oh i know i know how you would say this line Mm. and it's not that i'm saying it that way to mimic that it's just that i have a deeper understanding of this text because i know i have a deep understanding of where it came from Mm -hmm. and i'm really grateful for that too because it was inspired by this whole this whole story was inspired by an experience that sean had in his own life Mm. and he was both honoring that experience and also very open to fictionalizing it in a way that made sense for us. Mm-hmm. Um, and and that kind of generosity, I think, is rare as well. Mm-hmm. And it's more than generosity, right? It's it's smart filmmaking because mm-hmm. you, 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 you know that that's where the collaboration is, where, mm-hmm. where you, right? And you can actually make something better when the actor has... Um, an ownership of the character, yeah. right? And it, and it, and it, and it's, and especially if you can add time to that, to those ingredients, and then you have a wonderful thing growing. Was that was the was the this story of this feature always uh, taking place where it took place? No. So the movie, our film, Ben and Susanna reunion in four parts, is about uh, an American who comes to visit his girlfriend, who's also American, who's been working at an NGO in Sri Lanka, and. Ben is of Indian heritage, but he grew up in New Jersey. And Suzanne also grew up in the States. So there's this interesting um, kind of levels and layers of this person who looks like they should belong in a place, but Mm -hmm. they don't really. Mm -hmm. And this person who absolutely does not look like they belong in this place, but speaks the language and has been trying to make a life there. Um, And so that's that's the the setup for it. And so Ben comes to visit Suzanne after a long time apart and they take this road trip around Sri Lanka and uh, through various bits and places, their uh, relationship gets challenged in many ways and their individuality gets challenged in different ways. Um, And it's very much about these two people coming together. And the film was originally titled Tourists because um, Sean had this idea of people being tourists in each other's lives. And I think that's a great metaphor for relationships Mm -hmm. in some ways, because, you know, sometimes you're with someone you're like, you know, this was a great three day stay and I don't need to come back. Yeah. And sometimes you apply for citizenship. Yeah. Um, But you're, you know, you're experiencing a person for the first time. You're experiencing like, oh, what do you like to eat? Like, how, what are your, like, how do you sleep? Yeah. Um, Where do you like to go for, you know, 
for fun? What do you, what parks do you visit? So that kind of metaphor of travel and relationships, I think is really lovely. Yeah. And then, um, so yes, originally it was based on this trip that Sean took to India to visit his girlfriend at the time who was working there. Um, and so it was set in India for a long uh-huh. time. Uh-huh. And then at a certain point, maybe four years ago, um, maybe more than that, Sean might have a better idea of the timeline. <laughs> we were all like, Sean, your family is in Sri Lanka. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Why don't we just shoot it in Sri Lanka? Yeah. That makes so much more sense for everybody. Yeah. And that was so wonderful. I mean, his family was really involved in the making of the oh, film. Wow. Um, his uh, brothers are like PAs and, and uh, one character in the film. His dad was on set with us a little bit. Nice. Um, it very, his, his cousins were both in it as well. Uh, nice. A lot of the local folks were family members. Nice. Um, and it just felt like a real wonderful community of yeah. people coming together to make this. And it was entirely to talk about indie filmmaking, um, there's no studio money in this project. That's amazing. Entirely funded by friends and family, uh, which is, again, like unheard of. Um, so we're, we're very proud of it in, in so many ways. It was a, it's been a really special experience. That's amazing. So the thing that had to happen, though, that must have been a little bit of a burden for you is that you have to show that your character knows all of these things about this place and has to school <laughs> your boyfriend about this stuff, right? We start out with just the way you eat the curry. Mm-hmm. If I was doing that, I would be like, well, I could do this very confidently. And I'd just be imagining, well, there's maybe some part of this that I'm doing here. Or someone who knows this and eats this all the time in this way mm. will know that I haven't been eating this like this, right. right? How did you deal with these kind of aspects of having to convey mm-hmm. that your character is embedded in this land? I think the, the nice leeway that we gave ourselves with that is that Suzanne's not perfect at this she's still learning as well. And so I tried not to think about how that might come across. Mm. I tried to live with the, well, I'm learning this and she's been learning this. Um, I think it was also really helpful that I was there in February before we shot in the summer Mm -hmm. because I got a chance to try the food, to learn how to eat with my hands, Mm -hmm. to experience the space. And then Satya had never been there. So we did have that little bit of a dynamic of being like, oh, I, I, I was there before. Right. You've never been here. Let me show you this. Right. That was already kind of baked into the reality uh, of what we were doing. Yeah. Um, so, so yes, but, but also everyone was so helpful with me. I mean, our crew was wonderful and so lovely and supportive. You, you know, when you do any kind of film shoot, you don't always know what the group dynamic is going to be. You don't always know if everyone's going to be professional and capable right. and all of those things. And so we had hired this Sri Lankan crew. It was myself, Sean, Satya, and our DP, Molly Scotty, who's brilliant. Um, the four of us came over from the States, and then everyone else was local. Wow. And so we kind of went in being like, we don't know. Yeah. Um, but they were, they were wonderful and really supportive and really helpful in terms like helping me learn how to pronounce words. And mm-hmm. I would, you know, make them speak into my iPhone and record mm-hmm. it and then like listen to it over and over and over again before I had to say anything in Sinhala. Mm-hmm. Um, so they were, they were very helpful and lovely. Sean is a big fan of Romare. Oh, yeah. Right? And I am too. <laughs> yes, he made us watch a lot of Romare. Interesting. <laughs> Interesting. And you know what I respect about about him? You know, it's not, he, he can love someone like that and make a film on a, on a shoestring budget independently and and have the, have the what I would call the, the spirit of Romare. But it's not like he's, he's stealing stuff or, or, or kind of mimicking this style. Mm-hmm. You know, he has his own style. But tell me about the actual shooting of this, because this is, again, at this point, after 10 years, Sean probably was adaptable to the way you guys worked and the way that you liked to work and the way, and the way you worked best. Well, the thing that is interesting is that because there have been different versions of the script over the years and different iterations of what might have happened to these characters on this road trip, um, there was a bit of us 
trying to figure out, Sethi and I trying to place ourselves in like, wait, what is this version of Ben and Suzanne? Mm. Um, and like, okay, forget that. That's still a part, like that's still in the soup somehow, but like, that's not what we're doing here. Like now we're, we're on this train. Um, so there was a little bit of like mental gymnastics that we had to do, mm. even though there was this deep understanding of these characters. Um, but we went with um, the script that we shot mostly written and some scenes outlined, deta detailed outlines of what Sean wanted to happen in these moments. Um, and then we got there and we shot for two days and then we went on strike. Whoa, <laughs> no way. And that was crazy because, you know, SAG knew that we were going, obviously they were both SAG actors. They signed off on us going. And they knew that it was an indie film that absolutely had nothing to do with the studios. And they were like, at the time they were calling it a waiver, um, what became the interim agreement. But they were like, you know what, like, you'll be fine. You'll get a waiver. It'll be fine. So we get there and we go on strike. And it was it was really tough because we weren't we we weren't sure that the strike was going to 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 our dear listeners. Um, at that time, we were, weren't totally sure if the strike was going to happen or not. So we went with the possibility of like, maybe we will go on strike. Maybe yeah. we won't, but we'll be fine. Um, and so when they called the strike, we were like, oh, shit, what yeah. do we like? I guess we stop. And as you said, we're the leads in this film. There's not much they can do without us. It's yeah. literally called Ben and Suzanne. Um, so fortunately, our crew, um, apparently strikes are a very common thing in Sri Lanka. So they were like, great, fantastic, unionize. Um, good for you. Um, so they, they were very understanding of us shutting down. And when we were able to start back up again, I think pretty much everyone was able to come back, which is also I'm really grateful for. Um, but we shut down and then we waited six days mm. for the agreement to come through, oh. which was really excruciating because sure. we, you know, weren't sure if we were going to run out of money and have to come back. Um, we weren't, we were kind of twiddling our thumbs at the Courtyard Marriott in Colombo, which is a beautiful hotel, big fans, <laughs> love the staff. Thank you very much. But it was also like, we weren't there. I wasn't there to be on vacation. Right. I wasn't there to you know, sit around and, or right. even to explore Sri Lanka. I, you know, I, we went to a museum at one point and we saw Mission Impossible at one point, <laughs> but it felt like this weird liminal space where we yeah. were just waiting to see if we could make this movie. Um, and so during that time, we were like losing days. Um, Sean is cutting things and rewriting things. Uh. And so the script that we went with was not even what we ended up mm -hmm. shooting. Um, cause we were trying to accommodate the fact that we weren't going to have as many days and as many, I think there was one location that we cut even, mm. um, I can't remember all of the, the shifts. Um, so I think between that and also all these past versions of the script, by the time we got up and shooting again, and we were able to add a couple of days at the end. So I think we were supposed to shoot for 18 days. We ended up shooting, Sethi and I shot for 15 days. They shot one day without us. Mm. Um, so we, I feel like I blacked out yeah. during the shooting of the yeah. film. Yeah. Um, and when we left, I was like, I hope we have enough footage to make <laughs> something out of this. Um, so it, it felt a little chaotic in that sense. Yeah. Um, but also it was so rooted in Sean, like Sean has such a specific vision yeah. um, and is such a, a smart aesthetic filmmaker that we and we had had so many conversations about these characters over the years that it was you know we kind of just jumped in mm. well i asked him also to tell me this is great i feel like i'm what... learning secrets <laughs> i could ask him too but yeah <laughs> i don't think he would tell me anything no. different. <laughs> no you would never ask him what makes you special me right oh i would ask him that all the time you would <laughs> <laughs> i'm kidding <laughs> i asked him and he said, Anastasia is very artistically open. She wants to take in as much as she can that can inform the work. We've watched many movies and read many books together. It just felt like having a real partner through the whole process. She's also a how, not why kind of person. Yes. I want to, I want to, I, I'll, I'll, we can talk tell about me, that. Tell me, yeah, mm -hmm. I'm gonna get to the end of the sentence. She doesn't seek justification and is always more interested in the exploration. 
But what was that? What is that? How and why is that? What that means, right there? Yeah. To say it. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. I I love that he said that because that is directly from my work in experimental theater.、Mm. Um, I the director of our theater company for、uh, those eight years was always would always say. Your motivation to cross from this side of the stage to that side of the stage on this line is because I told you to cross the stage,、um, and he, not in like a you know tyrant kind of、yeah. way, but just like I don't care what your motivation is. Like、yeah. you figure out what your motivation is if you need a motivation, but like I've asked you to cross, so figure out how to make that work. Yeah.、Um, and so, yeah, I'm not an actor who needs a lot of like, what was their childhood like, and、mm-hmm. you know where is this really coming from? I think I I am more intuitive.、Um, And so I think just understanding what the situation is and understanding where I'm meeting it is like okay, like then I then I cross,、mm. then that I that I have to you know kind of do some internal justification for that. And if it doesn't if it doesn't feel right, yeah, then I'll be like, hey, Sean, like this doesn't feel right. I feel、yeah. like I'd like to try this some other way. But most of the time, it was like, okay, you want me to stand there? Okay, yeah, I'll figure out how to stand there. Yeah, yeah, yeah.、Um, And I think there's also, you know, a level of trust between myself and Sean that made that part easier. But, yeah.、Um, but yeah, I, I feel like I work from a more intuitive place. I yeah. Think. Yeah. You know, this reminds me of what, what you're talking about. Reminds me of when I was shooting my thesis film.、Mm-hmm. Of, of I had an actor come in for a very small role where she、um, had to stand on this strange. Sidewalk. I mean, stand. It's strange because she's just standing on the sidewalk,、mm-hmm. and my character comes over to her and says something. I mean, the main character comes over to her and says something, and she said to me,、uh, "Peter, on the day of the shoot, like, so we're about to shoot." She's like, "Why am I standing here?" And I was like, "What? <laughs> what? 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 What is this now? What do you? What do you? What are you saying to me?" Why am I standing here? And I said, and I just said, I, I felt like she needed an answer, so I just said, "Oh, you're waiting for your husband." Great. Right? Did that help her? Well, I think it did because she didn't ask again. Great. <laughs> <laughs> But and you know, and then I remember thinking, in my 21 year old self, there, like, what? Why are you bothering me with this question? You know, we're shooting this. Right, and I, you know, and I, I hate myself for thinking that because every time I see this movie, it is so dumb <laughs> that she's standing there, it, and I didn't know it then. Right, it's so dumb. Right, it makes no sense when you look at it. It's like, why is someone standing at this part of the of the sidewalk right. like this? Right, like she. That's basically she was trying in a nice way to say, Peter, what the fuck is going on here? <laughs> You know, right? So, but this brings up like, like you said though, and you said it. If it did, something doesn't feel right, you were able to, you're able to speak up,、mm-hmm. you know, and just say this doesn't feel right. And I think actors should do that. I think so too. And maybe she was feeling that, being nice about it, and did did the nice thing, which is asking me in a nice way for the motivation. Now, waiting for your husband, I don't think that was a sufficient answer. When I look back on the scene. Mm-hmm. And say, oh, then I would be standing over there. Is would have been my next question if、uh-huh. I were her, wouldn't、yeah. I? Because that would make more sense, right? Instead of this weird part of the of the sidewalk, and I think this gets into like, what should an actor do? Well, you know? I, I think a lot of actors are, you know, we understand that. Our job is one. Well, I hope we understand that our job is like one piece in a much larger cog of making the movie, and you only have a limited time on set, and so. You're kind of like, I guess I'm sitting here now. Like, okay, I don't know if I'm allowed to, you know, suggest.、Um, and the nice thing about the wonderful thing about Sean is that I always knew I could ask, and I always knew I could suggest. And Sean,、um, to his credit, like, is a very collaborative filmmaker.、Um, if our DP had an idea, he'd be like, sure, let's try. If we had time, like, let's try this.、Mm-hmm. Um, he was very, very, very open to collaboration, even while. Being very committed to his own vision of things, which I think is hard for people to hold on to sometimes. This is making me think too of I, I study with Bob Krakauer for、mm-hmm. online on camp online. Oh my god,、mm-hmm. we did do some online classes <laughs>、yeah. for a little while.、Uh, Bob and Josh Mandelow, who was one of Bob's teachers,、mm-hmm. who are both wonderful.、Um, and Bob is very good at breaking down 
the idea of, you know, you're, you're making a picture mm -hmm. and you're working within this frame and it's a visual medium. So you can feel as much as you want to feel, but if you're not telling the story within that mm -hmm. frame, then no one's going to feel with you. Mm -hmm. And so physically, how do you change the shape? How do you tell the story in that, in that way? Mm -hmm. um, and so I think that's also where, like, I don't necessarily need to know a motivation per mm -hmm. se. I just need to know that I need to turn my head like this mm. and that that will tell a story and that that's part of the bigger thing. That's interesting. See, and for you to have that, and uh, you've done a lot of shorts, but this is your first feature. A lot of people do a lot of features and they don't come to that. Well, you just said, <laughs> you know, yet. Well, that's how I work. I mean, I, I don't know if, if that's, you know, I don't want to people. I don't think there's one prescriptive way to right. make anything. Right. Um, but I think that kind of visual understanding, and I'm a visual learner as well. Mm -hmm. I think that's just helpful for me in, in my process. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And Sean, let's go back to Sean. Sean. <laughs> this, is, this whole thing is like a love letter to Sean Severotny. <laughs> <laughs> yes. And I said uh, uh, something about her that you discovered on the set, and he wrote that she's fearless. Oh. What do you think he means by that? I know exactly what he means by that. Because <laughs> I practically singed my eyelashes off running past those fireworks in that one scene. Oh my God, yeah. Oh my God. <laughs> that was a wild night. So wait, those were just happening? <laughs> no, we staged that. Oh my God. Yeah. And so how did they almost hit you? Because it, you, cause they Is needed to be in the shot. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it was real close to the road. Wow. Yeah. But it's worth it. I mean, if you had gotten singed, uh, and your eyebrows came off. At like, least they would, it would grow back. I was we like, have is the there shot. someone here with a fire blanket in case I catch on fire? Like, <laughs> it, was, it was the middle of the night and these fireworks are going up on the side of the road and we stopped traffic and I'm running past them. And I was like, I guess I'm Tom Cruise now. Wow. I guess this is my action yeah. movie. But you know that's not what he means. And you know it. Yeah. So tell me what, do you, think, what you think he means. Um, Maybe it's not a fair question to ask you. I don't know if that's a fair question yeah. to ask me. But what you, I, when you, you know, you know, fearless actors you've worked with. What did they have? Uh, I mean, there's a, I think, a vulnerability and an openness. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. Uh, this is, it, it's rare. I mean, you, you know what I mean? Like, there's people that that get by and they're and they get work and they don't go there. Why are you not afraid to go there? Um, cause I, cause that's the work. That's the fun part. Yeah. That's the exploration of things. I think something that I really love about being an artist, being an actor in particular, is that you work on so many different kinds of projects. And on every project, no matter if you're having a good time, if it's a bad play, if whatever, or if it's the best thing you've ever done, you learn something different on every project, whether it's about a time period or some part of yourself or about some person in history that you never knew about before or how to eat with your hands. Um, you'll, you'll learn something on every project. And I think that's fascinating. And I think people are fascinating. And I think like my own brain is fascinating. Learning about myself, I think, is very interesting. I've been in therapy for a long time. I don't know if you can tell. <laughs> yeah. but, um, that's all just very interesting to me. And so why wouldn't I want to be as open to that as I can in the work, mm -hmm. into learning something, into figuring something out? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. If you had your druthers and if you had no limitations and money didn't even matter at all, Let's dream for a second. Okay. What would you be doing in this work? I think just more of it. I am happiest when I am working. That's something that I've learned about myself, which is partially why I keep working, even though it's, or keep finding ways to work, even though this industry is really, really tough. So I just want to keep doing it. I want to make more indie films. I think there's something really exciting and raw and fun about that. Um, but I'd love to do studio stuff too. Um, Sean and I have, have a joke that I remind him of Mary Tyler Moore, um, which is very generous of him. But like her kind of career is very fun. To do some kind of a show like that would be would be delightful. Yes. Um, and, but, then, and then to do some kind of ordinary people at one point. Oh my right? gosh, yes. After that. Yes. 
I want to work with Yorgos. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I also love Triangle of Sadness. Like yeah. those kind of films are so fun to me. Yeah. And I, yeah, I, w I would love to do all of that, all of that. But yeah, I think like Sean and I have connected very deeply on Criterion art house style films. Yeah. So that's kind of where my my dreams would lie. Yeah. But again, I think there's something really interesting about form and the idea of a studio film and the idea of a sitcom and the idea of an independent film. Are there they're different versions of storytelling? And I'm curious about all of them. Anastasia Olowen, thank you so much. Thank you. This has been so delightful. Thank you for having me. Back to One is a production of Filmmaker Magazine, which is a publication of The Gotham, formerly IFP. Listen to back episodes of this podcast at filmmakermagazine.com or wherever you get your podcasts.